Hey everyone, it's Kristen, and today I wanted to go over what happens when you set up a for loop, how to initialize it, and how to deal with checking it, the contents of an array, whether it be a one-dimensional or a two-dimensional size array. So the first thing I wanted to go over is when you're setting up a loop, um, we want to basically do two things right off the bat. The first thing we want to do is we want to specify some integer value for the size of the array and set it equal to something. So this is going to give it a specific size. So we're saying like we're going to allocate uh, five integer uh, boxes in memory and give it a name. Uh, and that name that we're going to give it is the array A, which is going to be based in brackets here on the size. So you could also do something like this where you could specify five as the size. But here, we're going to use a variable to specify the size. And we've already initialized this variable, so this is uh, syntactically correct. And here, what we're going to do is this for loop is initializing the values inside of the array to give it some contents so that uh, we're not just allocating some junk values into uh, from a block in memory. So what I'm doing here, if we break this down, is we have several parts to a for loop that need to be addressed for you to understand what's going on. The first thing here is that we're declaring some variable, an integer variable, which uh, is going to be called an iterative variable or an iterative value. Uh, this means that i uh, is, a, is a tracking place holder. It's going to go across the multiple locations of the array and it's going to check them individually one by one. So we're thinking of this as a placeholder value as we loop through the contents of the array A. So we're going to set it at a zero value, which is uh, in memory, whenever you have an array, everything is stored from zero to size minus one. So in this case, if we specify size as five, the last value that I can iterate to, the maximum size, the last location in our array, the furthest down into the array, is one less than size. So size minus one in this case would be the fourth position. So in this case, we're going from the position four the position 0 to the position of 4. The last part of this is the iterative part of the loop. So we're saying here is that we declare this at some original location, index location, and we're going to continue our loop until we reach some terminating location in the array, and we're going to increment i every time that we loop. So every time that we go to the back up to the top of our for loop, we're going to increment i by 1 with the i++. So the three parts, again, to setting up a for loop is the beginning condition or the beginning value of our iterative variable, i, our terminating condition for the max size that i can reach in the array, and how much i is going to iterate over time as it goes through the loop. So this syntax right here, what I am saying is that in array A at position I, meaning I am accessing the array at the iterative position. So at whatever place that I is holding a value of between 0 and 4, uh, I'm going to store some results. So while i is increasing and we're accessing the array at that location, I'm going to take whatever i is currently set to, and I'm going to add 1 to it and multiply that by 10 to give it some value there. So to give you an idea of what's going on here, on the first loop, i is 0. So this would be 0 plus 1, meaning we have 1 times 10. So the a of 0 position will equal the value of 10. So the next thing that we do here is we're going to do a function call where we pass the array itself, A, that we have declared above, and its size into our print 1D array function. And let's go into the print 1D array and see what it's doing. So this is a void function. 
And what it is doing is it's printing the contents of A. This is also how we pass uh, an array into a function. Notice that I have to specify the type of the array, the name of the array. I have to show that there are brackets attached to the name of the array to let the compiler know that this is an array that I'm passing. And in order to access it, I have to give some size so that I can loop through it. So I'm doing a simple print statement here. And then on this line, what I'm doing is I'm looping through the array again. And I am printing whatever is currently stored in the i position of the array. So starting at zero position and going till size minus one, in this case four, we're going to print out um, the five values associated with the contents of A. So let's go ahead and set this up and run it with debugger and show you what's going on as we do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to step in and the first thing we're going to see is that size is 5 and that i is 0. What you're seeing here is the memory address of a itself in the code and we're now going to print whatever is currently at the location of a of i. The first is 10. We saw that from doing a calculation down here. And the next time, it's going to be 20, because i is now 1 plus 1, which is 2, times 10, which would be 20, and then 30, and so on, until we reach the size. Notice that we have finished the terminating condition, because i is now going to hit size, and we are going to exit and go back to our print array and finish the scope of the program. So that's what happens when you loop through a single 1D array. You're going to start at some beginning value and loop until you reach some terminating value with your iterative uh, variable. And you're going to do some process along the way accessing the contents using the scope brackets and an iterative value. Now it is something you should notice is that you can actually do something where say you wanted to print the exact contents of something, if you knew the specific location in memory of the, uh, the value, you could print it directly using some kind of command like this, where you say, like, I want you to just go to this position in the array and print out the value there. OK, so the next thing I want to do is I want to show you what happens when we deal with a two-dimensional array. In a two-dimensional array, instead of having just one row of information going from 0 to size minus 1, we are now dealing with rows of information stacked on columns of information, which means that we're now dealing with a grid instead of just a, a series of boxes in memory strung out in a linear fashion. So I'm going to go ahead and run debugger on this again. I'm going to go ahead and just comment out the things above here because we don't really need those. And we're going to do our second function call. We're going to set a size of 10 in this example. And we're going to give it a name and some uh, size as well. And here we're going to do our function call and take this up to our 2D array function. So you can see here, if we break it down, that we're using two for loops, one within the other, in order to access both the row and the column of the 2D array. Now the interesting thing here is you want to understand basically when dealing with 2D arrays, which loop is doing what process and what's going to happen as a result of that. Because we're dealing with a loop that has to execute x number of times or n number of times until we uh, finish the inside loop. Once the inside loop has reached its terminating condition once, 
We're then going to go up and iterate through to the second iterative value. We're going to increment i to 1. And we're going to have to repeat the process again over and over again for as many times as the outer loop specifies. So the inner loop runs twice as many times as the outer loop does. And we'll be printing the rows, the horizontal values, while the outside loop will be keeping track of the stacks of those rows or the columns of information. So to show you how that works, we're going to use debugger again. And we're going to go in here and start with uh, the process to show you how this is going. So the first thing we do is we're going to start with our i value. And we're going to go straight into the for loop. And we're going to go into the second for loop and begin the process of the for loop. And you can see over here in the corner that j is being incremented, but i is not, which means that we are running the program here inside of our inner for loop, but we have not yet, as of yet, reached that condition uh, for the i value to be increased until j reaches the size specified. So see here that j is moving towards size, which is 10. But as of right now, it is 9. Now we have just finished our first inside for loop iteration. We're going to do some printing. And now we've got our first line printed out. So j has gone across and it has printed the entire first line of our 2D array. And now i is finally incremented for the first time. And you can see here that the process begins again as j moves slowly towards size again for each line that we're printing. So it's going to take us a while to get through the printing execution of a double for loop. So I'm going to take this off and show you what this is going to print when we actually do it. If we were to run this all the way through, notice that we're getting the same thing over and over again here based on the size that we're specifying. So we're printing a row every time, and each time i is increasing as we go down one, and j is going every single time to size for every line. Well, that's all I've got for you guys for this video. I wanted to just give a quick overview of one-dimensional and two-dimensional arrays and how the for loops that are used to execute them basically run underneath the hood. I would highly suggest using uh, the debug tool in your own code to check to see how this works, you know, play around with uh, for loops and see how they work when accessing information or printing information in a 1D array or a 2D array. Thanks, guys. I'll see y'all next time.